Listen. Well, in answer to the last question, uh, first, uh, no, uh, different white supremacists, white supremacists are very skilled, very adaptable, the most sophisticated ones. They know the white code. So they say, okay, here comes, uh, here comes the, the black guy who, you know, works down on the dock and whatnot, and he, he likes hip-hop. So, okay, so I'll learn a little bit about hip-hop, you know, and so that way I can talk to him a little bit about him. He'll be relaxed and whatnot, and then I can talk to him about other things mm -hmm. that I want him to do that'll fit me, okay? So they'll do that. See, the white supremacists, they are master, masters of psychology. I mean, you know, they're, they're the best psychologists in the world. Mm -hmm. They okay. know how the mind works. Mm -hmm. They know how to make a black person laugh. They know how to make them cry. They know how to make them sad. They know how to do all of this. Why? Because they spend full time studying us. All right? We don't spend any time studying them. We spend full time studying us. Yeah. That's why we don't really <laughs> learn anything about the world that we are, the real world and who runs it that we are in. Mm -hmm. Because we spend all our time watching each other. One slave at the bottom of the ship watching the other slave at the bottom of the ship. Now, how much are you going to learn from that? Except how to have contempt for people who are enslaved, which is what we do. And that's why we go at each other every chance we get. Yes, sir. All right. We, we're down at the bottom of the ship hitting each other with our chains. Okay. We, we're chained now to the, to the ship, the slave ship. That hasn't changed. So we spend our time doing what? fighting each other in the bottom of the ship. And every now and then, the captain of the ship, uh, or the sailors in charge, would not, white, they come down and splash water on us or something, you know, turn the hose on us if they, uh, on them if they got one sophisticated that, you know, and break up the fight, you know, so that they can get some sleep. Because so that's all it is. I mean, they don't care about us. I mean, you know, they just break up the fight so we can get some sleep. You're disturbing us. You, 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 you dark people, you slaves and whatnot. The captain has to get his rest. The captain can't put up with all that noise that you sometimes make. They don't mind you fighting each other as long as you don't kill each other because we got to use you, okay? We'll let a few of you die. I mean, you know, that goes with the trade. That's part of the business. But that's basically what it's all about. Every black person on the planet who has been exposed to white supremacy, and the assumption is every black person on the planet has been, even when they haven't been in contact with white people directly. They've been exposed to the white culture indirectly. White culture is about white supremacy. Now, what does white supremacy do? It teaches people of color that if you are a male, you cannot be a man, period. Not in the system of white supremacy. And you're not going to be treated like a man, ever. Now, you can walk around and think that you're a man, but that's between you and you, strictly between you and yourself. Because no white person has an obligation, if you're a black male, to treat you like you are a man. And it's logical simply because in the system of white supremacy, it's impossible for a black male to be a man. It doesn't make any difference how old he gets or what he knows or who, what kind of connections. That can't be done. Uh, my, I, I just start with myself. I'm not eligible, not qualified to be a man. Why? Because I was born in captivity. That's why. When you're in captivity, when you're a prisoner of war, you are strictly that and nothing else, a prisoner of war, a victim of white supremacy. And you don't have another title. You can give yourselves all kinds of titles, which is why black people love titles. We give ourselves all kinds of titles. We give each other all kinds of titles. Some titles, it's not as bad as it was in the old days. I say bad, if you want to use that word. But some people used to say uh, professor, reverend, uh, most high. I mean, before you ever get to a name, you would have about 40 titles 
you know, when somebody introduces you, if you're supposed to be what you call a big shot Negro in the old days, this is not new. This goes way back. That struggle. Oh, I, I just love to be a man. I mean, what can it take? But by this generation, what you call the new millennia, most young black people have looked around. They have looked at the people that came before them who in the ninth, since the 1960s, the white supremacists have done a terrible, a rough job on black malehood. First of all, giving them an option that you can continue to be a big boy or if you really want to get some material benefits, put on some gold slippers and skip around, I mean, and grin all the time and all like that and have a little money in your pocket. Now you can be a black girl if you're a black male. You can be a black girl, but you cannot be a man. You will never be a man in the system of white supremacy. Now, they have put that in cement. They have written, or rather in steel, or whatever you, the hardest subject, a diamond. The white supremacists have put that philosophy out here since the 1970s. That's, that's the benchmark that I give it. All over the world, and they're spreading it. They're saying, you're not going to be a man. You're a black male, and you think you're going to be a man on my watch? On my watch, this is the voice of the white supremacists now, racist man and racist woman. See, that's not going to happen. See, now Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad and all of that, they said that that's what they're going to make you out of, but it's not going to happen. Now, you can talk it, but you make any move to make that real, and I'm going. you're going to wonder what fell on you. Now, they have made that clear to all of us. And the young black people have picked up that signal. And they say, well, if I can't be a man and I don't want to be like my sisters, I don't want to switch around all day looking for a male. And, and I, I pretend to be a female or try to switch over and be one if they can operate on me and make me one. Because then things become easier. I mean, uh, I guess, I hope, you know. But I definitely can't be a man because I'm in big trouble if I try to be. Then uh, what can I be? Well, the white supremacist said, well, I'll give you another outside option. You can go around and pretend that you're a man by doing harm to other black people. That's cursing out black females, calling them names and all like that. Write songs about them where you call them all kinds of names and kick them all up and down the street. We don't care about that. Kick your mother up and down the street. I mean, we rejoice when we see you do that, okay? But if you start acting anything like you ask for respect from us, the white supremacists, boy, you're going to get dead real quick. Most black males, we know that because they teach us that in no uncertain terms when we really start asserting ourselves and say, you're going to respect me as a man. And the white supremacist said, you tell that to other black people, but don't you get in my face ever, boy, and act like you're even thinking like that, dealing with me. Now, I'll play with you for a little while. I'll laugh and joke with you. But if you get serious and think that you're going to be a man, and when I'm here, because there ain't but one man in this house, and when I say house, I mean the entire planet Earth. Anytime you think with your black self, you're going to be a man in my presence, you got another thing coming. Now, like I said, I'll play with you. I'll kid around with you. I'll joke with you. I'll play some ball games with you and all like that. Don't you ever think that you're a man. You're a boy, or you can act like your sisters and be a girl, and you ain't got no other choices with me. But you've got all kind of choices with your own people, even though your own people are really not your own people. They are mine, too. But you can kill them. You can show, tell them, ain't nobody going to disrespect you. Well, you tell that to other black people, boy. But don't you ever even think it in my presence. You don't even have to say it. Don't you even act like you might be thinking that. Or you're going to find out what the hell is. And you know what? The white supremacists have proven that they can deliver on that message every time. And I don't care who you are if you're black on this planet. 
when you really put them to an acid test, they have so far proven that nobody will take them on because nobody knows how to, including Neely Full. I'm just trying to find out. I'm in their prison, too. I was born in their prison, too. So to get to the crux of what we're talking about here uh-huh. for black males, we're talking about manhood, and it's not going to happen, folks. As long as you have the system of white supremacy in place and not having a system of justice. This is why, rather than run around killing each other, that's not going to help. Now, some people have said they've seen some cartoons of my work uh, on the Internet that have been presented. And that uh, it, it pretty well embellishes what I have been trying to say in my textbooks. And uh, to the extent that it does that, well, that has been, from what I understand, some people reported to me a plus. Because they didn't understand what I had written very well, but when they saw those cartoons that just repeated what I was saying and attaching my name to it and uh, came right out of the book, the material did, uh, they say that they better understood it. And I can understand that because people are kind of visual, particularly in the year 2021 now, uh, more visual than ever. 